And Good here we progress. go, ladies and gentlemen. There's Josh, uh, and, and and he is uh, waiting to do a show here. Uh, yep. We're going out over uh, Facebook, and we're going out. Also, I'm also sending this out over our. Um, oh wait a minute! I got to do this. Let me just send it out. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Wheeler is here. I'm Alex Bennett starting this whole thing off. And we're also streaming out over our regular stream that we use. And uh, uh, hello to you, Josh. Hello. How are you doing? You're hosting this little little bash for us tonight. That's right. We're going to fill in one more time for Jack Bishop. See how that keeps going. Yes. Um, Hope he's doing all right. This is normal spot, but I'm Josh Wheeler. So you got me for the hour. Did, uh, did you hand the hosting duties over to me so I can yeah, let people in? I just did, I think. All right. Okay. I'm I not sure. You're hosted. Let me goes. see if you're going out over there. Uh, Oops. Uh, all right. Here we go. If we're all we technically go. set and sound, we'll get oh, yeah. going, I guess. Yeah, you're going. You're all going. right. Well, now we'll... all we need is to have some people call us. Yeah. And uh, you get going, but why don't I just shut up and let you kind of do some uh, a monologue for the time being? Yep, no problem. And I'm I'll, sure we'll have some people showing up here in just a second. I'll come back but, and uh, see you in about an hour, I guess. All right, that'll work. We'll see you in just a little Martinez. while. See, you already, you already got somebody. Got people calling. We'll have okay. a couple more here in a minute. Anyway, I will black I'll see my... See you in a bit. Okay, bye-bye. All right, see you. But yep. So AB steps away for a minute. You've got me, Josh Wheeler, going to fill in again for uh, Jack Bishop. I hope that he is recovering well. We'll have me here for the next hour. Maybe we'll get a couple callers. Uh, so in the meantime, I'll just start out with uh, a couple things that we might do this week. If anybody's listening and wants to call up on anything, I would say that you can uh, you can call up. We'll talk about anything you want. If you uh, don't agree with me feel free to call up and tell me that you don't agree I, I i actually uh i like that i'm open to that um you know so uh feel free to do that but yeah i had a heck of a day working yesterday a very long day we had some issues at our uh at our plant we had to take care of and uh just a just a long day for the staff and all of us so i got a little bit behind on the news but uh, if you if you saw President Biden's speech yesterday, and I have to admit, like I said, that I I have not. Um, I've seen the media coverage, but I have not seen the speech. So if you have and you want to talk about it and you want to tell me if you thought it was good or if you thought it was bad, go ahead. Uh, you know, I wanted to start tonight with, uh, you know, I told my friends Patrick and uh, <clears throat> Kevin. You know, earlier this week that uh, I don't even can't even remember now what made me think about it was that I wanted to maybe ask people and then I'll give them my answer to start them out. But, uh, you know, President Biden's popularity is kind of kind of it's it's rebounding. So he's on a little bit of a string of, of victories, you know, the inflation and uh, student loan forgiveness and, and various things that, that he's worked on that that have him more favorable in the public eye uh and his party overall more favorable in the public eye so he's not uh he's not looking so bad to everybody as he was maybe six or eight months ago but i got to thinking i i, I kind of wonder you know kind of who everyone's favorite president that they have is um and i don't know you know this is something that uh you know I might think about or historians might think about C-SPAN has a ranking they put out every four years of presidents where they survey a large number of academics and historians and they take a vote they publish a book they go through this big thing and and you know they rank the presidents and all that and it's really interesting to see how it changes how some people who were maybe out of favor eight ten twelve years ago have really moved up in the rankings or vice versa because of the changing historical interpretations, new information that comes to light, time passes and wounds heal, whatever it is. So I think about that kind of stuff sometimes, but I wonder if if anyone else out there really does, and they, you know, they they want to talk about it just a little bit. Cause I, you know, 
I know that sometimes, you know, uh, Alex gets gets it sometimes too, where people get a little tired of, you know, Trump or, you know, whatever, and current events and kind of, you know, they, they bring people down sometimes. So I thought that was something that we could banter about for maybe a couple of minutes that is serious enough that we can have a good conversation, but maybe not, you know, so close to today that it, it gets people, uh, you know, pissed off on a Friday evening on a holiday weekend because politics does that to people. So, so I, I would tell you that my favorite president is, is probably an odd one. I think everybody would think it would be, you know, like Washington or Lincoln or something like that. And that's what everybody, you know, goes with. But, you know, my favorite president, I think, uh, for me is, uh, look, I, I'm a big fan of U.S. Grant. You know, I'm a big fan of Ulysses S. Grant. Um, you know, Grant is from Ohio, where I'm from, and I, I know a lot about him. But that's that's not the reason. Um, you know, my my respect for Grant is uh, uh, in a couple of ways. One, um, pre his presidency, you know, I, I really uh, I had a lot of respect for 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 Grant and you know his handling of the Civil War. Uh, I loved his fighting spirit. I love the way that he finally took the he finally took the fight to the enemy, to the Confederacy. Uh, I've I've always been um, fascinated, I guess, by this relationship that Grant had with uh, William Tecumseh Sherman, who was also from Ohio, uh, whose home and estate is just about a fifteen or twenty minute drive through the country from where I live. And I and I, I'll get right to you, Charlene, just a second. And uh, I, I always loved that relationship that they had. Um, you know, I remember talking to Patrick one time about how I have that, you know, I have that letter that, you know, Sherman once said to Grant that just said, you know, my success down here in the Southern Theater is, is because I feel that no matter what I do, I will succeed because if anything should happen to me, I know that as long as you are alive, you will come to my aid. And, you know, that, that trust that they had, you know, with one another. And then, you know, when he became president, I think Grant did a lot of things that got uh, forgotten, you know. Um, uh, you know, U.S. Grant was a huge uh, uh, a proponent of civil rights, um, you know, for African-Americans. Uh, he, he, he literally squashed and eliminated the Ku Klux Klan right after it really came to rise. Um, just a few years later, uh, he, he had the Ku Klux Klan eliminated um, only for them to come back after he left office because the, the folks after him did not keep up on, on his good work. Uh, and I think that, that history has now shown um, through, through some good works that uh, some misconceptions about Grant were uh, either false or were, or were completely blown out of proportions and, and so much as he was not corrupt uh, at all. Um, he was not uh, a, a total drunk all the time. As a matter of fact, Grant went long periods of time in his life um, where he didn't touch alcohol at all. Um, and then he would have some times when he did. And it was almost always due to being alone and being bored. He, he, he almost never had those issues when he was with his family when he was at home or when they were with him uh, on the road. And then to wrap it up, uh, but my biggest thing that I, I like about U.S. Grant is that he, he is something that I wish that I was, but uh, that I am not. And that is Grant never showed anger. He never showed frustration and he never got excited about anything, even in battle. Uh, he never yelled. He never swore. Uh, he 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 never did any of that. I mean, in the in the in the hottest battles of the Civil War, people say that he was calm the entire time. Cigar in his mouth. He put out his orders. Move that column up. Why haven't they moved over there? That was my order five minutes ago. But he never yelled. He never did anything. And I can't do that. <laughs> uh, the opposite end of the spectrum from him was Washington. Washington was well known for fits of anger. He would pound his fist on the table. He would, uh, I don't know that he ever threw his spaghetti up against the wall, 
um, you know, like uh, my other favorite president, but uh, but he uh, he would get close to that kind of stuff, and that's more me, I guess. <laughs> but uh, um, so that's that's why I just have this thing about Grant because I I I like that style, but. But so you can talk about that if you want to. And if not, we can just completely move on to, to anything else now that we've got a couple people. So we've got Alan is here with us now. We've got uh, Kevin. We've got Patrick. And now Charlene is with us, too. And then go ahead, Charlene. She had something she wanted to say a minute ago. Well, I'm on your president. You know, I don't know that much about him. But uh, like that was the Civil War was the South. It was that, all I know is like Grant when like Grant took Richmond. Was that like the battle in the Civil War that's famous or something? Well, that that was pretty much the end. Um, like were, Grant took uh, Richmond, they say, right? It's a, yeah, it's that, right. that was that pretty much wrapped it up, you know, for the most part. There was some stuff that went on after, uh, but after the fall of Richmond, uh, things pretty much were the 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 die was cast, if you will, uh, for for a couple of long years. Um, Everyone had just constantly went back and forth about trying to take each other's capital. That was an obsession. And, and now, Josh, I'm going to get a little silly. Like, and the other thing is, who's buried in Grant's tomb, right? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's in New York or something. You can find out if you go to C-SPAN. They did a whole special. Event. So, no, but know. I mean, it's in New York somewhere for some right. reason. It it's in New York. Why? City. And then they just spent a lot of money to, because people were like messing it up. They were like, you know, uh, doing graffiti on it and stuff. I think yeah, they, they had some trouble with it. Yep. it up, but right. he is he is buried in New York City, and he he died just that right in uh, New Jersey at his. Uh, Wait a minute! Oh, I'm in New Jersey. What know. happened in New Jersey? But yeah, he, he had a retirement villa in in New Jersey, and that's where he died. He retired oh, okay. to New Jersey after after his presidency. And Woodrow oh, Wilson uh, was from New Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> and my my favorite is I thought you were going to take my favorite because um. I'll never forget, I met a woman one time I didn't know when I worked in a restaurant. She said the last great president we ever had was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And she explained to me, because he started uh, Social Security, unemployment, he actually did something you know, for people. And that's why she felt he was the last great president that we ever had. Like, well, you know, a lot of people... Uh... A lot of people like FDR. He, I'm sure, you know, he would be high on a lot of people's lists. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Patrick, you know, is uh, like a Millard Fillmore guy or something like that. I don't know. I we'll have to ask him to find out. Does he know? Because what the hell does anybody know about him? You know, yeah, like in um, who was the one who was shot by a disappointed office seeker? Uh, oh God, uh, Garfield. He, he served- he, he got assassinated or something yeah, like that. Garfield was shot Gar- by James him. Abram Garfield, shot by a disappointed office. A comedian used to do a bit like that. Yeah, he said, if you look uh, up, shot by a disappointed, that's all everybody remembers about him now, right? Because it was yeah, so long ago. All right. Who's Patrick? You got one? Did you, oh, did you, well, did you get all that? You came in late, so maybe you don't know what I asked, I guess. Mm-hmm. But if you got a favorite president, I mean, like I said, maybe you're a Millwood Fillmore guy or, a, you know, Zachary Taylor or something like that. You're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I guess I really hadn't thought beyond like Washington. Right. But only because I think everyone following him their flaws were more known where Washington was almost insulated just because he was the first. Um, You know, you you had um, Adams with all of his uh, little foibles between he and and, uh, Jefferson. And, you know, I... I would. I, it it sounds like a cop out, but I would say Washington, um, I mean, that's, in the it's, same way as, as Grant, military leader. Um, he would very. Uh, he didn't take any any shit, but at the same time, Washington seemed to have an even keel to him, um, at least in public. Yeah. 
when you were behind oh, yeah, 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 right. doors. Right. Then it was, you know, why do we not have the money to have this army clothed and fed? And, you yeah. know, so I, yeah, it sounds like a cop out. I hear it in my own head, but I have well, to. Well, it's, it's, it's not. I mean, listen, he's a highly ranked. Okay. I mean, and it, but, you know, the ranking and the respect for Washington. They're legitimate. I mean, that's so it's not, you know, a cop out like you, you think it is. I mean, he has a lot of credit due to him for a lot of a lot of reasons. And, you know, it's it's legitimate. It's not necessarily uh, just popularity. There is substance there to be found with Washington aplenty. I mean, it's not it's not overblown, in my opinion. Um you know, Washington would probably be second on my list or, or something like that. Maybe I, you know, I haven't, you know, made a list. I mean, I, I, I just have like a, you know, personal connections with, with, you know, with U.S. Grant. And like, you know, I said, uh, you, we've talked about this before, uh, that, that relationship with he and Sherman, I just, I've always found to be, you know, uh, just fascinating because I mean, that's what turned the war. And it was as simple as two two men understanding that you know they could rely upon each other really uh as long as they were still alive you know and that that that's the kind of thing that i've i look for you know uh and, and grant's memoirs are very uh they're very honest you know i always respected that grant would admit a mistake um openly uh even in even in you know, looking back, he he could he could take a look. He was critical of himself at certain points. You know, is that that line of his that you know I've always regretted that last attack at Cold Harbor. You know, where a lot of people died, and he gave that order, and he said I I shouldn't have done that, and I did, and men died. You know, and and but at the same time, you know, he's it's it's not as if he were personally responsible. He was leading a, a war. He was leading the greatest army in the history of the world at the time, you know, so what, what can you do about that? But may, maybe Alan's got one. We haven't went to him yet. Uh, you know, but we should, we should go around and check in with everybody. You got a, you got a president on your list, Alan, that was, you know, near and dear to you. Uh, Bill Clinton. I mean, look, Hey, when I was young, um, you know, uh, Bill Clinton was, was running for president and then, you know, was elected. And I, look, I was a huge fan of, of bill clinton um you know a, a lot of it was just popularity and i was you know whatever but i mean and i think that he did a a, a, a good job you know during his presidency if you want to you know kind of get more academic about it but yeah i loved bill clinton when i was young i mean he uh he was you know he was a popular guy at the time and um you know, he had a lot of energy and, you know, things like that. He was, uh, yeah, he had a pretty good, pretty good deal. Charlene? I was going to say he was like so hip and cool because he played the saxophone or something, he right? Did. Something like that. Yeah, he brought some that popularity is. and some, you know, pop culture things sort of into the mainstream mm -hmm. at the time that uh, that hadn't hadn't existed, you know, nearly as much uh, in presidential election cycles, you know, prior to that. Um, Certainly a little bit with John F. Kennedy. I mean, you know, he played the I'm cooler than you are card. You know, uh, oh, my family's I, I don't mean to interrupt films. you, Josh, yeah. but Kennedy was so cool. Marilyn Monroe sang happy birthday to him. Yeah. I mean, I'm just a Marilyn Monroe fan. Right. I think that was so awesome. You, you have to be cool to have Marilyn Monroe get up and sing that song like that to him, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So there's Charlie Wallace joining us now. The panel's getting a little bit bigger. How you doing tonight, Charlie? Doing pretty good. Did you hear the uh did you hear the beginning? Did you hear anything we were talking about? Anything you wanted to say? Oh, I just walked in. I was umpiring tonight. All right. Well, we'll come right back to you in a minute then. Does uh does did Kevin have anybody he wanted a name he wanted to give us? Eh, not in particular. I didn't I didn't study the early presidents really. I just what I've you know learned over the years not nothing deep um i liked lbj kind of taking yeah. over what he i mean lbj is another another popular person because uh 
you know, he had substantive accomplishments. What he had to do. And and he got a lot of it done through his own, you know, just gusto and bravado, you know. I mean, he took a lot of shit and he didn't. Right. He didn't. Well, yeah. I mean, he he certainly walked, you know, he. He, he walked his own path and, you know, he, he had a hard time with a lot of it, but he, he kept pretty walking. Much killed himself doing it. Uh, yeah, he, he really did. Um, you know, and a lot of our presidents have made that, that sacrifice, uh, probably more than we realize. And he is definitely a prime example of that. Yes, for sure. Charlene? No, I'm just, I just, you know, he only did the one term. He didn't want to do two terms, but he finished Kennedy's stuff and he's like great right. for civil rights he passed more civil rights than mm-hmm. any other president or it, nobody's ever done more than he did for civil rights or something i probably have that wrong yeah, he, was sorry, a, but... he certainly was a leader in pushing that legislation you mm-hmm. know through congress for civil rights but uh before so before you came on charlie we were going to talk about a couple things and i just said that you know since it was friday night and uh you know it's a holiday if, if we wanted to, we could talk about something that was serious enough. We could have a good conversation, but we didn't have to make it modern or mainstream politics and uh, get people riled up or anything. So I, I told people that, you know, my favorite president was maybe an odd choice or whatever, that my favorite president was U.S. Grant. And I, I sort of explained why. And then I just asked everybody, you know, maybe if they had a favorite president, they wanted to tell everybody, but. You know, so if you've got one that you want to tell everybody about, you know, go right yeah. ahead and give us a name. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. That's, you know, that's an, another good one. I mean, there's, uh, look, there's no doubt that, you know, the accomplishment list for FDR is is long. And a lot of it is uh, is pretty, pretty thick in substance. You know, it's not just that he got a lot done, but the things that he got done were, were big time, you know, uh, big time accomplishments that have lasted really since, you know, since, uh, since his time, since his death and his legacy has only grown more and more with that, uh, with time. And, you know, historians have, have uncovered quite a lot more about him. Um, records are always coming to be available and, you know, new findings, and, you know, like Kevin said a minute ago with with Lyndon Johnson, you know, almost killing himself mm-hmm. in service of his country, which he basically did. FDR definitely did, um, you know, for sure. So he he sacrificed quite a lot. Charlie. I don't know if Charlie knew that that was the one I picked. But one thing that he did do is he set that, uh, you know, that you can't do more than two terms because he had four terms. So he, uh, you know, was smart enough to know that even him, it was too long a term and yeah, he they, term limits, right? They for, pushed that through after, right after uh-huh. his death. Oh, yeah. after him? Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but FDR's, you know, FDR's a good one. I mean, uh, there's uh, <clears throat> a lot of great uh, historiography out there about FDR, a lot of great, a lot of great scholarship, but it gets, gets bigger all the time. Uh, so kind of a good bit of a, a or a good note you know, to wrap up on that with a a lasting legacy is if the more and more that historians look at you or look at FDR or some of these other people that we chose because they become popular, you know, it's just like it is today, right? Now we say when someone runs for president, oh, they pick their life completely apart, right? You know, and they find the stupidest stuff from forever ago. But even though they might not have done that when FDR ran for president or, you know, when Grant ran for president, we've done it since. OK, I mean, historians have done it since they they've just done it after the fact, but they've done the same thing. I mean, they've in fact, they might have done it even more thoroughly because in, in the, the case of historians, they've read their private letters. Right. They've read their diaries. They've read their correspondence and they've got firsthand accounts of conference i mean we don't have all that stuff right i mean we can't we we don't have access to you know uh trump's diary why he was running for president or obama or anybody's like that or we weren't allowed to read their letters that they wrote to each other i mean maybe trump's because you know he's going to publish all his on the internet because they're declassified now but you know 
we didn't have access to that. So, you know, from a historical sense, we have an even better look at some of these people. So the fact that FDR, U.S. Grant, you know, LBJ and some of these guys that their legacy uh, and their the picture that we have of them has stayed pretty well intact. That's that's good news for a lot of them. You know, I mean, U.S. Grant, uh, like 10 years ago, was ranked something like the 32nd best president or something by the group of historians that participate in the C-SPAN survey. And this last one that just came out, he's all the way up to like 16th or something like that. So it's a good example of how great scholarship can improve people's standing, you know, among not just scholars, but as then they put their work out there among the public, you know. So Ron Chernow, for example, wrote that you know, biography of Grant, and it's a very popular book, and it got a lot of information out there that 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 uh, kind of put to bed some of those misconceptions that I talked to about Grant earlier, you know, that he was corrupt, and that he was drunk all the time, and, you know, that he was a butcher during the Civil War, you know, we they heard that, you know, we hear that now, you know, that he sacrificed men uncontrollably, and it didn't bother him, and all that, well, it did bother him, you know, I mean, there, are, he would never show it, you know, but, but people, but it did bother him. So, you know, that's, that's just something that I like to ask people about, but, you know, so the other thing I might talk about is there, so there's an article today in the Washington Post that says, uh, President Biden has put all the talk about a primary challenge to bed, comma, for now. <laughs> so, I don't know what you guys think about that. I mean, I, I was never, honestly, I was never a big believer that there was going to be this huge primary challenge anyway. Uh, if you thought differently, go ahead and tell me that you thought differently, which is fine. But I was never a big believer in that because, number one, I I thought that it was way too early to even make that determination. Uh, number two, I've said before that However bad off you think that he is or was, I'm positive that Truman, for example, was in worse shape. Um, and there are other people who were, you know, in in as bad a shape. Uh, LBJ was in pretty bad shape when he left, for example. Um, you know, I know he chose not to run again, but like we were just talking about, history has you know, rebounded a lot of that for him. But so I guess I'm asking because, you know, the panel is usually full of a lot of people that would vote in the Democratic Party uh, nomination process, et cetera. I mean, did, did you think that he was going to get challenged? Do you think that he should have? Do you think that he shouldn't? Do you think that's too bad? And I mean, if if that's the case, then are you now thinking that he's done enough for you that he should run for re-election or that you want him to run for re-election? Or do you, or do you say, you know what, actually, I think what he should do is not. And he can, he can end up like he, he you know, he can build on this a little bit and then step aside. And, and that should be his legacy that he can have all these accomplishments in one term and then, you know, go by the wayside and, not take a chance of ruining it. You know, I, I guess he should go out a winner or what, whatever you want to say. So I don't, if anybody's got something they want to tell me about that, I'd love to hear it. Charlie looked like he had an opinion. Yeah, on it. I, uh, I have kind of mixed feelings over Biden. I, I, I think well, he certainly he's better than uh, any Republican out there, but I just don't, uh, he's not, liberal enough not progressive enough for my taste so yeah. i i would like to see that but on the other hand you know sometimes he surprises us like his little deal where he snuck that through it at the end uh <laughs> when we had pretty much given up on on the uh what you call it the ira or whatever they called it i think it pretty much depends on who comes in okay because yeah. I'd like to see him step aside, especially if he basically he's been the calming seas. And I think uh, it also depends on who comes along to succeed him. 
because if nobody comes along, then he's going to probably have to be there. Yeah. And that's a long four years ahead after that. Yeah, right. And then we'll, yeah, so we'll. Honestly, I don't think it's a good idea. But, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt, but it's going to be another long four years. Right. In my opinion. Uh, Well, it's a long time, right. somebody else should jump in. Who that is, I don't know. I got a couple ideas. It might be a good idea, but um, I think my ideas are probably a little bit more stretched, as you would say. But um, yeah, hold on to those for a couple of maybe another six, eight months till I start spouting them out. But right. Um, well, yeah, because we're not even to the midterms yet. Yeah, I mean, right. But I, I, you know, I honestly think that I don't think he should go for another term myself. Yeah. Okay. I like Biden. I've always liked him. I think that if Gavin. I would have liked to have been, I would have liked to have been, this would have been his second term, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Right. But he had his reasons with his son and whatnot, but I understood that too. But I think he was in the game late. Right. I get that. Yeah. Alan? I I, I think if uh, somebody like Gavin Newsom, could take over. I think that would recharge. Uh, he's uh, probably the most powerful Democrat of any governor, maybe of anybody right now in the country. Yeah. Um, he's good looking. It's appearances uh, have a lot to do with uh, uh, winning campaigns, uh, you know, it's stuff like that, I think, you know. Yeah. No? Right. Uh, Does Patrick have our neutral opinion? Maybe. An observer's opinion. I mean, I know you're really big on Kamala Harris, so I don't <laughs> no, play. But uh, you know, Patrick, you are. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I I gotta tell you, I I would rather Karl Mark came back to life than to see Harris come in. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I if Harris, if if something happened to Biden, be it. He got primaried out by Harris, or if he resigned or died and Harris came in, I can't think of a worse person to be in the Oval Office than her. I mean, and I would think a ticket of Karl Marx and... (laughs) Mao said tongue would be yeah. much more palatable to me. And maybe even um what's his name? Paul Pot. Uh they may as well do the killing field here and I'll volunteer to be the first one to then gun down because So I looking at from, looking at it from the Republican side, what would you like to see on that ticket? <laughs> I mean that's a fair question. Yeah. Well, it's the more fair question because in a lot of ways, this point, they really have a decision to make. You know, they have more of a decision to make than, than Democrats do, yeah. in my opinion. I mean, and that has nothing to do with whether or not you like the current one. I mean, that that's just that's just the, the they're both pretty much in the air. Yeah, that's just the fact. I mean, right. you know, they're they don't occupy the seat now. So that obviously means, you know, that theirs is wide open. But you know, like like the current office sitter or not, you know, it doesn't really matter. But the, the Republicans do have the biggest decision to make. Um, and that would be natural in this status if even if all the names and players were different, but they're not. I mean, they do have their one, you know, big jackass that they have to decide whether or not, you know, that they're going to go with. I mean, they're they are truly at the fork in the road where they must choose their direction. You know, Charlie? Well, I could vote for that jackass, do you? Who can vote for? I can. You, you could vote for Trump? Trump? I could I could go on either side. I'm an independent. I could I could decide that I like whoever's a Republican. <laughs> I, I can understand you saying that. I cannot understand you saying you can vote for Trump. Oh, no, no, no. I could if I liked him, but I don't. Yeah, because, I mean. 
But a Republican, that wouldn't hurt me to vote for a Republican if he was a decent vote. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah right. I can understand that. I mean, you know, that's, I mean, look, that's American. I mean, you know, if, right. I, in all honesty, that's why I want to know. If, if, you know, everyone should look at it. Let's, you know, I, I just right? want to point out that my one worry about Biden is he's going to be 82 years old in 2024. Yeah. Right. That means he'd be 86 by 2028. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're really pushing it. Yeah, that tossing, is gonna... tossing the dice or whatever because I better have a good president. vice president. <laughs> he, he, chances are he would not make it through a second term. Yeah, you never know. I mean, would it be? Would it would be? It would should be? Would it be Kamala and the vice president, which would be really scary? You know, well, I don't. That's, I don't know that. That's, yeah, that's to be determined. I mean, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't fear the death of a president as much as other people. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's just because I'm a uh, the uh, twenty five. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's just because I'm a, I'm a you know pure believer in our constitutional system and that it that it survives all. I mean, I, I feel like uh, you know if a president died in office, I mean okay we have a whole plan for that and that's then we follow it and that's you know the country goes on and i mean doesn't really skip a beat right you know i mean you know now with that said i'm i'm really not a fan of kamala harris i mean as you guys know i mean it's not like a personal thing or whatever i just i don't not a fan i don't think she's a great politician Uh, i don't think she's much of a leader what's that I'm not a fan of hers either. And yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think a lot, a lot of people are. You know, I mean, uh, honestly, I, I don't think she's that popular. I didn't understand it then. I don't really understand it now. But Charlene, yeah, I'm sorry, but um, you know, like uh, Kevin, they're joking that uh, uh, Tony went to the dark side. He's not going to the dark side, right? <laughs> like Tony, and I wanted to tell um, all you guys that don't like Kamala Harris. And if you want, I have a 48, 48 year old friend here in New Jersey. And she always says that to me. I don't have a problem with Kamala Harris, but uh, she doesn't pronounce her name right. And she does not like Kamala, you know, Kamala. I don't know how she says it the wrong way, but whatever, know. you know, you guys all should uh, meet her. She's a pretty cute girl. <laughs> she's uh, single now. She divorced, you know, she's divorced. <laughs> I'm just making a joke. I'm sorry. You got, I, I think, I think the problem, Charlene, is it wasn't funny. Too <laughs> hmm? What was that? I think her problem is she's too liberal. She's too liberal. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. it could be for most people. I mean, you know, her politics aside, I, I, I just don't, I don't even know in, in some ways that I can explain it, but I, mm-hmm. I don't know. She, she just doesn't. Uh, it's not a personal thing. It's just, you don't feel that she would be good. That's all. Well, like, I mean, she that. doesn't, uh, you know, just get, you know, respect from me. I, I don't. I mean, that kind of sounds bad too, because I, I mean, I don't have any sort of, you well, know, animus to or anything Josh, like that. Like Sarah Palin is terrible. You know, I didn't like her yeah. at all. Remember, you know, nobody liked her. That's what ruined McCain's run because he picked the wrong running mate, probably. So mm-hmm. Biden has the wrong one too because people really, I guess, don't appre- you know don't care for her. You know, yeah. Kamala Harris. Patrick had something for us. He's the local chapter president of the Kamala Harris fan club in Milwaukee. <laughs> right, right. Sarah, Sarah Palin, she did it for me. So, well, yeah, like the, we're not either. talking about or, sex though here, Patrick. <laughs> I know enough, but that that. No, no, but who's the one that you always like with the great legs or something? I. As it was a long time ago that you liked. Uh, is it the beautiful blonde in Bombshell? What, what's her name again? The beautiful uh, wife from Bombshell. I, I can't remember. Uh, sorry, go ahead. It's been a few of them over the years. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not discriminatory that way, you know. So you like a hot blonde. Or? I mean, <laughs> you know the you know the vice president Harris. I mean, you know again I. I, I'm just not, that's not who I would choose to be, you know, a nominee. It has nothing to do with uh, how uh, pretty she is or whatever, I, yeah, you know, like that. I don't care about any of that. I mean, you no. know, it just, 
you know, I, I just don't think, like I say, that that she's uh, a very skilled politician. Confident. I don't think that she's uh, not enough experience. That she's very well respected among uh, mm. her peers, um, which is important. And uh, she just isn't. Uh, you know, I don't know. She she doesn't have a lot of leadership ability to me. I, I don't see it. I mean, you know, I, like I said, yeah, I, she wouldn't I, be able to cut it leading things. So, so you never know. But I mean, you know, that that's the thing about, you know, the deal with Biden. I mean, I, I think that's an interesting article and an interesting headline, you know, that that he's put his primary challenge, you know, to bed for now, you know, but again, I, I never really saw it to begin with. I mean, I think that I think that it's up to him. So that I, I guess is what I think. I think it's up to him. I think that whether we agree with it or want it or whatever, doesn't matter. If he wants to run for re-election, then I think he's running for re-election. I don't think there's going to be a big fight about it or anything like that. Okay. Cause that's not going to do the democratic party, especially if Trump is the Republican nominee, any good, that's not going to do anything. Okay. I'd rather have an incapacitated Joe Biden with Mickey Mouse as his fucking vice president, okay, yeah. over Donald Trump. That that's just fact. Okay. So I mean, if okay. if he wants, I think it's up to him. If he wants to run, then he runs. Yeah. And if other Democrats get in his way, that is completely their right within the American system. But it's a mistake. They're they're not they're not help. I mean, even if they really feel it in their heart that they're doing the right thing. I, I I can respect it, and it's it's patriotic, but it's it's not smart. And so that's my opinion. And if he doesn't run, then I it's not going to be to me because he was primaried and he couldn't get the nomination. It's going to be because he. So I think it's up to him. He's either going to say I'm running or I'm not running. Um, you're probably going to get that in the next. Am six I am months. I talking too much now, Josh? Man. Eh. I was, I was just going to say, though, I, I'm not that happy with Biden myself. Like, I think I, I agree with Charlie. Like, I have no dislike for Kamala Harris, but I, I think he maybe should step down like that, too, and let another Democrat come in, if possible, because I uh, they say a lot of the people are upset like that with Biden. They're not too they don't think he's really doing anything. Well, his, his popularity is, is you know, that's what started the conversation. His popularity is back on the rise. Um, he is ahead of, you know, where uh, George Bush was, uh, you know, before he got reelected. He's well ahead of where Truman was before he got reelected. Um, I believe he's ahead of uh, one or two others. So, I mean, it's not the worst off. He's also not the best. 43% I mean, right now or something. Yeah, I think it's even creeped a little higher than that. I thought About it was packed 44 up to like, was last time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, like you know, 40 30 was I thought I saw somewhere. So it's it's you know, but it's slowly but steadily rising. Um I think that if if inflation inflationary issues sort of flatten out, at least don't get any worse, you know, that'll be a positive for him. Gas prices seem to be um, maintaining and, and steadily lowering, that'll be a positive for him. Uh, there are some uh, policy things that they've had recently that I'm sure they can continue to hammer away at for the next couple of months because the news is going to be paying a lot of attention because we are headed into a primary. Um, I'm sorry, not a primary, a midterm election. So his accomplishments are going to get naturally repeated uh, like we were talking about on Alex's show, under, you know, with Trump for free, right? Because the media is going to talk about them a lot for free. He and his party are probably not going to have to spend a lot of money to remind you that they just uh, forgave student loans yeah. or that they just uh, did an inflationary spending deal or, you know, this, okay, you know, whatever you want to say, this, that, and the other. If you don't like those policies, it doesn't matter. I'm saying that's going to sort of be the news cycle, right? Because that's how it works. So they're going to get a lot of free media and a lot of a lot of the home court advantages, if you will, of the party that is in power. So I think that those things are going to not 
make his popularity go any lower, right? I mean, I, I don't see it how status quo wise, he, he becomes any worse off. I mean, if something happens, then something happens, okay? That's totally different. But if nothing really happens and they just slowly keep inching the ball forward, then his popularity or his approval rating, yeah, that's probably the better way to put it, his pop, you know, his approval rating yeah. should probably continue to creep up. Um, you know, look, I would have to give some respect because I would say that one year ago today, for sure, everyone, this panel, outside this panel, would have said, oh, the house is gone, Senate's gone. It's yeah. gone. It's all gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, the, it, it, why even waste time having a funeral? It's gone. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the <laughs> that was the, that was the general thinking, right? And here we are today. Okay. And now, now we're actually in a period where we can talk about it. I mean, the election is what, 90 days away or? No, 70. Yeah. Le okay. Less. I mean, we're, we're there now, right? Okay. We're the in the game. We, the we, we're, we're, yeah. We're not talking about the game that's going to get played. We're in the game. Okay. So we can talk about it. And I think now it's moved to a, a decent consensus that the Senate is going to be okay. And there are, you know, people now starting to say, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, might be tough, but the House, I don't know. I, maybe it could, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I'm saying. You're starting to hear that kind of talk. We'll see if it happens, but you're starting to hear that kind of conversation. And a year ago, that was unheard of. Now, if you don't think that Joe Biden should be given all the credit for it, okay, fine. Go ahead, speak up and tell me. But I also don't think that he didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, there were some accomplishments that have contributed to that. Now, if you think they're a stupid accomplishment because you hate what it, he accomplished, that's okay. But, that's, but, but it's still an accomplishment for him. I mean, I didn't think Trump's tax plan was a good accomplishment, but it was an accomplishment. He got it done, right? I mean, so that's what I'm saying. I look at it that way. I don't put my personal, you know, belief in it. Well, it's not an accomplishment because I didn't like it. Well, no, um, they passed the law. Where I'm from, that's an accomplishment. So, you know, I, so I don't think that he's had nothing to do with that success. Um <laughs> In some ways, I would I would say, hypothetically, if the Democrats maintain control of the Senate and they maintain control of the House, and this little list of accomplishments of his that we just went over, and he defeated Donald Trump in the general election, and then he and then he does that, and he's the first president to do it in I mean, forever. I, I got to tell you, I think that's pretty impressive. I mean, yeah. like, you know, again, if you don't like him, fine. But I'm just saying that's that's going to have gotten to me. That is a ginormous political comeback from a year ago. People saying yeah. House gone, Senate's gone. Oh, and by the way, and he's finished. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, there were people who said he should resign. Right. I mean, I mean not just Republicans. I mean. You know, I mean, five dollar gas. He should resign. It's all his fault. I mean, so I don't know what you think about that, but I mean, uh, I guess I'm just, just saying. You know, even six months ago, like on Alex's program, I mean, look, I'm not saying that we you you've got to kiss his ass, but I think you've got to admit, well, we probably should have been more patient, or we probably should have cut him a break, or whatever. It you was know. pretty chaotic when he took over. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I, I just, I find that, you know, pretty interesting that I think he's made a pretty decent political comeback. You know, that's just my interpretation of what I see happening, you know, that he's positioned himself actually pretty well, um, which in some ways is sort of a, invitation for him to maybe think about being a one-term president because look if you get reelected, you got four years to undo all the accomplishments that you that you've already made right i mean you know a lot of stuff can happen that you get blamed for 
It's like winning I mean, the Super Bowl and going out on top. <clears throat> right. I mean, that's there is something to be said for that. I mean, you know, you see it in sports or or whatever, you know. I mean, uh, you know, so you know, there's been all there was there was rumors for years that you know the Cincinnati Reds would hire Barry Larkin to be their manager, right? And, and some people I could see their point of saying, yeah, but he 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 played his entire career there. He won a World Series. He was an MVP. He was totally beloved. But he comes back and they make him manager of the team. And five years from now, if they're going to have to fire him, right? So, <clears throat> I I can see a point where they'd say yeah, he could just keep being that guy that everybody loves. Yeah. <laughs> or he could come back and manage, and whether it was his fault or not, things don't work out. And then he has to get fired. And then that relationship from that point forward is all strained, right? I mean, you know, I remember my my grandfather saying that for forever, you know, Tony Perez, a hell of a guy, hell of a ball player, terrible fucking manager. I have no idea why they <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean it, it had, you know, I mean, you know, that that that's the that's the way it was. So I, I can see that 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 side of it, you know. Now, if you're Patrick and you love Kamala Harris, I mean, you know, maybe you're thinking, God, I wish he just resigned so I could get my Kamala Harris sign out or whatever. You know, that's 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 Patrick. Like when, when Clinton was in office, I prayed for him every night because I couldn't imagine Al Gore. <laughs> oh, God. And it's the same thing with Biden, I pray that he lives and nothing happened because I don't want Kamala in there under any circumstances. And you know what? If he dies in office, I want it to be weekend at Bernie's. Just <laughs> keep him propped up and he's still alive and just have Jill hollow him out and have Jill use him as a puppet or something. Nothing wrong with anything that. To, anything to keep Harris away. It's 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 damn near been done before, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. administration. I know. So, I mean, you know, a little law bending here and there isn't uh, always bad, right? I mean, what if anything happens, you about just, Jimmy Carter. Uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> if anything happens, he could just, you know, declassify the documents. Everything be fine. They were declassified. <laughs> so, so, you know, it. it just never know, but you know that's something that we had to talk about tonight. So, does anybody like the 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 big changes that I guess CNN is trying to go through? I mean, I I no. again was no. totally out of the loop yesterday. No, but I I guess John Harwood is out or whatever at CNN. I saw an article about he was one of their main political political guys, and uh, I mean it it looks like CNN is trying to go through maybe like a a rebranding or something like, I mean, they seem to maybe be looking to totally change their format. I don't know if anybody has a thought on that. Yeah. From what, from what it looked like to me, they're trying to be the CNN of what they were in the nineties um, yeah. where they weren't as left leaning that they were trying to be more centrist because that was the news that I always went to. And then they became left, then you got Fox, and then of course you got that other one, whatever the hell that one called. Oh yeah, MSNBC. Um, <laughs> so I would like to see CNN actually continue to clean house and have like the old Wolf Blitzer and um, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Bern, Bernie, um, uh, can't think of it. Oh, from way back in the day. Yeah, where? Yeah, uh, uh, Judy Woodruff and uh, Bernard Shaw. Bernard uh, Shaw. Yeah, a show I called mean, Inside we, Politics, maybe that yeah, I used to come I mean, home and watch every every day. Yeah. But see, when I watched that, to me, they were just giving it to you straight. You know, there was yeah. no no slant, Patrick. You mean no no slant? Yeah, it, it just seems... It was news and not uh, opinions, is what you're well, saying. 
Well, they, they did. Yeah. And they did some politics every night. I mean, they had crossfire every night. Right. I mean, that was like hardball before hardball. Um, you know, uh, they did. Yeah, they did inside politics at maybe like four o'clock. Uh, crossfire was six or seven. You know, Larry King was on every night, I think, at nine Eastern. Um, yeah, you used to watch a lot of CNN when I was a kid because it was more uh, independent minded or what, you know, I mean, whatever. Yeah. I mean, and that was at a time before everybody had their own little niche market they were talking to, you know. So, Alan. So I'm uh, a lot more liberal than you, Patrick, but I'm with you. Let's pray that Biden makes it through his four years. I would not want to see Kamala Harris president. I am I am right there with you, buddy. It's just it's a scary thought. Charlie didn't sound like he liked the changes to CNN earlier, no, right? I don't know. Okay. They're, they're, they're going more right wing, it seems to me. Oh, really? Okay. You know, honestly, I have to admit, I don't watch that much of it. I don't really watch too much cable news at all. Um, I'll listen to a few minutes in the morning sometimes of Morning Joe. I mean, it comes on at 6 Eastern. Uh, sometimes I'm at work before that. So, uh, you know, I don't I don't watch as much of it. Um, I don't find it entertaining and I don't really find it informative. Charlene? Does does anyone hate Don Lemon? I yeah. mean, you know, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, I was just thinking maybe somebody can't stand him or something. Because now you know, what about the the absence of uh, Chris Cuomo? And now he's got his own podcast, right? You know, because he they don't I, want to app or anything, right? I don't know to be honest with you. I nobody never... likes Chris Cuomo's. Uh, he was putting a slant on it. His opinion. Because he was giving a lot of his opinion, right? I used they to pretty much him. all do, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. That was their that was their show. That was their that's what they were there for. Lemon and Cuomo. Yeah. Back to back, yeah. Yeah, there's certain there's certain segments that are there for that reason. And then there's certain, you know, portions that are there for the news. And that's right. Well, CNN has changed their whole operating philosophy now. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were just talking about. That I guess they let John Harwood go today, maybe or something. Yeah, I think so. And, and the thing is, been taken over by uh, Discovery. Really? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they are under new ownership. Oh, no they they don't. They don't want any any problems. They're gonna hire some giraffes or something. Or? <laughs> no, they they the whole idea is they want to go middle of the road, you know. Yeah. And just have people report the news and the, you know, <clears throat> not everything should be breaking news. They took that off of there. Yeah. It's, well, that was their original. So their, their original intent, uh, you know, many years ago. Oh yeah. When, when Turner right. started it, he right. said he wanted a uh, news outfit without bias. Right. You know, Cable it, news network. We yeah. still want one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I remember the first day I watched the first day that CNN signed on. Yeah. He said this is CNN signing on for the last time. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. 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 Well, well we're about to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, um, I know Sher uh, Sherilyn has her hand up. Well, before you go, I just want to say you met Ted Turner. Uh, everyone heard uh, that uh, poor Jane Fonda. It has uh, cancer. She poor just Jane Fonda. She's 84 years old. Poor yeah. Jane Fonda. And she's got... Uh, no, but she uh, feels bad because she can get great medical coverage because she has money and everything. Well, also, I like she, she, also she has a a form of lymphoma, mm -hmm. uh, non-Hodgkin's, which very is... Very treatable. Uh, very treatable. Yes, right. So, yeah. Anyway, I just love Jane Fonda. I'm sorry. She's 60. What? And she looks like she's 60. Right, for her yeah. age. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, she'll look better five days dead than we do right now. So. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, good job, Josh. All right. You know, another good job. And I hope everybody enjoyed uh, 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 being yeah. here with you. Uh, sure. So everybody say a big goodbye. And we'll have a good have weekend. Good weekend. Bye. Bye. Good weekend. Okay. Bye. We'll see you later. Merry Christmas. Good night. <laughs>
And let me see. Let me sign us off here. Okay. All righty. Uh, let me see here. There we go. <laughs>